Hey gang, so today we're going to start looking at the graph of a quadratic function. So all those fancy equations that we were solving last week with the x squared term are quadratic functions, and they can be graphs just like a linear function and just like an exponential function. So we're going to see what that graph looks like and talk about some of its features today. So the vertex of a quadratic function or parabola is the minimum point of a positive quadratic function and the maximum point of a negative quadratic function. It is sometimes referred to as the turning point. A parabola is symmetric with respect to the vertical line called the axis of symmetry. When describing the range of a parabola, it will always be greater than or equal to the y value of the vertex of a positive function and less than or equal to the y value of the vertex of a negative function. So I just gave you a whole lot of information. Um, we'll talk about all of it as we're going through the examples. Know that a parabola is the shape of a quadratic function when it's graphed. All right, so let's see what we have. So we're going to start by graphing the function y equals x squared over the domain negative 3 to 3. We're going to find the turning point, axis of symmetry, and describe the range. So something we haven't really done before is when we're graphing a function over a range, we don't put arrows on both ends. We only graph from point to point over the range that's given. So we're going to pull up the function y equals x squared. And we're going to pull up the table. And we're going to change the window because I want to go back up by ones. If your table is different, you can set it. And you can see here that from negative 3 to positive 3, okay, we have 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9. So the function starts up high, goes down low, and then it comes back up. It turns around the point 0, 0. So that is our vertex or turning point. Okay, if we pull up the graph, we can even see what that looks like. Okay, so that shape, that U shape, is what we call a parabola. In this case, this one has a minimum value because that vertex is at the very bottom of the graph. Well, let's go back and actually graph it ourselves. All right, so we have negative 3, positive 9, which is right here. And again, we're just graphing point to point, negative 2, positive 4, negative 1, positive 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9. Makes sense because the square of 0, 0, the square of 1 is 1, the square of 2 is 4, and the square of 3 is 9. So again, just point to point, getting the same U shape we saw on the calculator, which is called a parabola. So now we have to find the turning point or the vertex. So the vertex in this case is 0, 0 because that is the point where it starts to turn. The axis of symmetry is x equals 0 because the line x equals 0 is actually the y-axis, okay? And that is where we have our symmetric line. If we were to fold the parabola, parabola in half along that line, all the points would match up. And then last, we want to describe the range. Remember, range refers to the y values. So our y values, our range, is going to be y is greater than or equal to 0. Now, if we're only going from point to point with the range, we could say that it's between 0 and 9. But let's describe the range of the whole thing. If we had arrows and kept on going, it would continue to increase as well. So the range is everything greater than 0. As you can see in the table, Okay, this is just going to keep getting bigger and bigger on the y-axis. And then if we went up the other direction, 0 again is our lowest point, And then it gets higher and higher on the y-axis, making our range greater than or equal to 0. All right, let's take a look at another example. Number 2. So now we want to graph negative x squared. So we go back to our y equals. We're going to insert a negative sign here, not a minus sign, a negative sign and then go back to our table. So now you can see that all those numbers that were positive are now negative, and that 0, 0 is now still our turning point, but at the top of the graph instead of at the bottom. So negative 3 is going to be negative 9, which is here. Negative 2 is going to be negative 4. Negative 1 is going to be negative 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1. 2, negative 4, and 3, negative 9. So now our graph is upside down. It is still a parabola. 
but it is the opposite direction of the last one. Okay, and again, our vertex is zero, zero. It's at the top of the graph, so it's a maximum. The axis of symmetry is still x equals zero, because again, the line x equals zero is on the y-axis and, and models the symmetric half of that graph. If I were to fold it along that line, both sides would line up perfectly. And the range is now not y is greater than or equal to zero, but y is less than or equal to zero, because all the points fall below that point zero, zero. Everything's going under it. And again, like we see in our graph, zero, zero is the highest point, then all the values on the y keep decreasing and getting lower than zero. Okay, so those two were very easy. Let's see if we can find some more challenging ones. Number three, so now we have negative x squared plus four. So we're gonna go back to y equals. I'm gonna just add in plus four and pull up the table. So now our plus four, we have to find our vertex. So here I start to see numbers that are the same. So zero, four is our turning point because four is sandwiched between three and three. Okay, so we can graph again those points from negative three to three, negative three being at negative five. So left three down five. Negative two being at zero. Negative one being at three. 0 at 4, then 1, 3, 2, 0, and 3, negative 5. And again, just from point to point, we're not putting arrows in this case. If I didn't tell you to graph it over a certain range, then of course you would put arrows to show that it would continue. Now we go through and talk about those points. So our vertex is now 0, 4. It is a maximum because it's at the top of the graph. Our axis of symmetry is still x equals zero. And note that that is the same value of the vertex, the x part of the vertex. And that's again because if I draw a line at x equals zero or on my y axis, that is where if I folded that quadratic form function in half, all the points would meet up perfectly. And our range is now y is less than or equal to 4 because when we're looking at the y side of the table, 4 is the highest number. All the other numbers get smaller in both directions. All right, let's continue there. Number 4, oh, you're going to complete 3 through 5 on your own. Actually, 4 through 5 on your own. I did 3 with you. All right, so again, using that same idea, see if you can come up with the vertex. Tell me whether it's a maximum or a minimum and then state the axis of symmetry and the range as well. 